Star Trek Prodigy Season 2, Episode 11 Review Last Flight of the Protostar So, uh, yeah, he's Chicote's grumpy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he was isolated for like a decade. Yeah. So now we got not just uh, the two ships, but we have a real ship that's a sailing ship. Well, that's not until next oh. episode, so we'll have to. Yeah, but the, weren't they. Like, didn't they figure it out and they started building it the first the, this uh, I'm not sure. Maybe towards that's the, the end. Problem, that's the problem with watching two at a time. Yeah. <laughs> the, the split, you forget what the split is. I'm pretty sure the split was them, like, getting... I, I thought the split was them getting ready to go. Like, getting... The, like, building it. Yeah, possibly. Well, if you... But he at least more. mentioned that they were going to sail. Because... Before this ship can fly, it, it needs has to, to yeah. float. Yeah. That may have been the line that finished off the first one. Is it yeah. needs to before it before it flies, it needs to sail. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, getting Chicote to to believe again. It's like huh. And, and Dal nearly getting eaten. <laughs> yeah, but that's on par for Dal. Oh, Birdman died. Although yeah. I like he was dying as a skeleton. <laughs> yeah, well, it must have. Uh, like we we've only saw like the like saw fish, the eels, and apparently there are some bugs going on, or at least some some very effective decomposers because that was he was just you know bones at that point bones in uniform I mean it was 10 years yeah and we don't know how long into it he was down there and he was loose in the dirt the main reason why decomposition of bodies takes so long and like human bodies is because well, there are a lot of um, preservatives being put into the body during um, embalming. You know, at the more, embalming, yes, thank yeah. you. And then they're put into a box, which also blocks out the dirt and all of the bacteria and amoeba and like bugs and worms that would eat the body. So if left out, after 10 years, the decomposition would be remarkable, even just in average. Plus, yeah. it seems to be a very humid place, considering, like, the cloud cover and all that stuff. So, that does also enhance the bacterial um, spread. So. Yeah. They're just saying they gotta. They gotta. I love the fact that we're analyzing the decomposition of the body. Plus, <laughs> he was, he was a bird species, so probably less meat on those bones. Yeah. He's kind of on the skinny side, but it's so sad. Wait, what? What was his rank? I I think he might. Have, was he the XO? I think he I was. Think the... he was. If if he was the executive officer, it was probably a commander. I think he, I, yeah, I think he saw, I saw three pips. Well, that would yeah, be commander. I, I, yeah, case, I think it was commander a Greek. It was so yeah. bad. No Kentucky Fried Commander. <laughs> <laughs> it just brings to mind those cartoons when you have two characters that are, you know, adrift and getting very, very hungry and one starts looking like a bird. <laughs> yeah. Usually it's like a hamburger or something. Although yeah, like, like a fully cooked turkey. And it's yeah. like... He's like... Okay. Mm. <laughs> like, um, um, you're, you're, you're looking at me funny. <laughs> I bet your finger 
looking good. <laughs> I need an adult. <laughs> but yeah, we also find out that like they that he vented all the you know, got rid of all the stuff and basically made it to where the the protostar couldn't fly. It's like yeah, we're no protostar. We got rid of that. We. Can, Got rid of the star, got rid of all the the antimatter and deuterium and all that, vented that all out so that it would be, you know, literally could not move. So the what was in the, the Ouroboros couldn't, you know, get out and do something. But but, thank God for a hologram Janeway. He would have really gone mad. Probably why he prioritized keeping her around yeah it's like i'm i'm I'm, cool. con- I'm conserving my energy no she stays <laughs> <laughs> yeah because no, no replicators no you know nothing out on the ship except for janeway <laughs> okay i'm pretty i'm like 99 percent positive this is in the first episode uh what exactly would a P-class planet be? It's P-class, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't... It, you don't really... It's one of those things that... You don't hear about the, it much. Yeah, the blank-class planet, you don't really hear a lot of that unless it's a M-class. A class P planet is a planet that is covered by water, ice, and is capable of supporting life. Huh. Uh. But yeah, you don't, you, it doesn't, it's really quite obscure, the whole blank class planet. Like the only one that really we get on any regular basis is them looking for an M class planet, which is basically Earth like. It's and close that to the, stands for Manshara class, which is yeah. a Vulcan word, meaning sustainable or something. Yeah, it's, it's a planet that, you know, so if you hear on Star Trek, oh well, that's an M class. We're looking for an M class planet to set down on. It just means Earth like. So you know, meaning they can they can be in the the thirty mile zone. <laughs> so a class P a class P planet um, is identical to a class M apart from the surface composition. Green is one of the uh, class uh, P planets. But yeah, we don't. We, again, we don't see it a lot, but it does. But it does occasionally come up, but almost exclusively as when they're talking about M class planets. Like, oh yes, well, oh yeah, we need to find an M class planet. Or oh, they they escape. Look for any M class planets where the escape pods could have gone to. You know that sort of thing. And that's typically the only blank class we see. Well, there's also a class Y, the demon class. Yeah. But again, yeah, like, again, all these exist. All these classes yeah. exist, but you almost exclusively hear about M class because that's, because when they're looking for escape pods, when they're looking for some place to sit down for repairs or, you know, something like that it's like or they're you know they're discovering new life it's probably going to be an m-class planet again mostly because most of the star trek is done live action so (laughs) they they want to use that 30 mile zone around uh los angeles and uh that that's that's an (laughs) m-class Set. Well, just okay. So just just like Doctor Who, a lot of the planets were in were rocky terrain because they used the same quarry, just different parts of it for like half of the alien planets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the thing it's about the same sort of thing with uh, with with uh, Star Trek, they had yeah. a certain area they can work with so most of the planets look like that yeah 
it's what's called the 30 mile zone. It's why uh, the, that celebrity drama thing is called TMZ 30 mile zone. It's, it's a, there's a certain spot in Los Angeles and a 30 mile radius, I think around that spot is called the 30 mile, the TMZ. And if you are producing something and you want, you know, and you're working out of Los Angeles, if you have something inside that 30 mile zone, you don't, you don't have to pay your people to get to the set. Like if you want them to go here, if it's within the 30 mile zone, you don't have to pay them for that. But if it's outside the 30 mile zone, then you have to pay them for going out there. Um, I think that's how it works or something like that. And there's a Tom Scott video on it. Uh, but the thing about it is uh, reasons you see something like Vasquez Peak so often in media is because it's inside, it's just inside the, the TMZ. And so if it was at the road, if it was on the other side of that road, of like a road, it would be, it would be outside of it. But yeah, so most things you'll see if it's filmed in Los Angeles, it'll be in that 30 mile zone. Though a lot of things now film up in Canada and like British Columbia or something like that, or Georgia, like there's a lot of that sort of filming because it's cheaper than the filming in Los Angeles. But yeah. That's why M classes law look alike. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or close well, enough. I'm, yeah. So, close I'm enough that you can have them all in the, all within a thirty mile radius of a point in Los Angeles. Yeah. And, and just a slight change of lighting, a slight change of camera angle. Yeah. Amazing what lighting and camera angles can do to change this or uh, change a terrain. Oh, yeah, because yeah, <laughs> both Star Trek and Power Rangers have used Vasquez rocks. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, it's all repurposed. Because oh, we do this, we we'll do that. As long as everything's in the TMZ, it's cheap enough. But uh, what else was there in this first half? It's like, oh, that thing hasn't run in years. Well, uh, watch this. <laughs> Percussive maintenance. I like, I like it. it. <laughs> <laughs> we get to see a little more of the old Chicote coming back. Yeah. You know, he he was on his own for so long and like isolated and just kind of a broken old man, but he 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 warmed up to them. Yeah. yeah. It was I, I. He was more pushing them away because he was afraid of losing anybody else. So it's easier to not get attached than you know, get attached and oh, they're dead too. Fuck. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Why he was also so touchy about his his chessboard is like that. Nope. Those were his officers. He's carved his officers. Yikes. I mean, you got so much time on your hands. Yeah. Also, the the fish eggs taste like sulfur. I don't know what caviar actually tastes like, but... Uh. It doesn't taste like sulfur. It's an, it, that, is, that is an interesting thing, though, because he is a vegetarian. It is established, canon in the um, in Voyager, that he is a vegetarian. And so, rather than catching and killing the fish he catches and takes the eggs in order to avoid having to kill to eat because there isn't enough vegetation to survive off of that's a nice little tidbit that i just thought uh, that i just realized like literally <laughs> just now <laughs> i love it yeah, i love how it's like the, the murph is like no put them back yeah, Murph catches all the fish. It's like, we don't eat the fish. No. No. <laughs> Put them down. Yeah, but, but he likes Murph later. He's like, oh, oh security. Security? <laughs> oh, I see 
you yeah. like security. Uh, Merc makes a really nice seatbelt, I gotta <laughs> say. <laughs> like, okay, it's like, you're going to find Dal, I'm coming with you. And you're gonna need an engineer. Like, okay, you're, you're going because he's your boyfriend. You're going to help keep the sh- yeah, keep the thing running. Why is he here? Security. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And no one can understand him. I don't but know. But he's security. The, the whole, like, anti-matter thing kind of really makes sense to me. Okay. So, crash course on warp cores. Okay. Okay, so, in real science, if you take a bit of matter and a bit of antimatter and you put them together, Kaboom. They, they annihilate. They yeah. release a ton of energy. That I and get. So, in order to create faster than light travel, what they do is they don't actually go faster than, they, than light. They warp space time so that space is a smaller distance. And in order to do that, they need an immense amount of energy, which at matter and antimatter. The type of matter they use has to be correlative to the antimatter because it's kind of like having a grape in it anti cherry they won't uh, okay. it that won't makes work more sense, so I was they, about to ask, like, yeah everything's yeah. tuned for a certain so, type of antimatter so, and a certain type of of matter to be used in this reaction and which is catalyzed by dilithium that's why you hear dilithium crystals lithium crystals sort of catalyze the anti-matter antimatter reaction and so that's why they had antimatter that was a big deal and then they went into the the eye of that storm to get the deuterium, which is what they're kind of set up for. And the the ram scoops on, like you were saying about the ram scoops, is basically, that's good. yeah, the, the that's what these ships use to they. If say a ship has an, plenty of antimatter. Well, occasionally, if they get a little low on the matter they need, they just find a cloud of, of gas, and they have these things called Bassard collectors, and the rams sort of scoop up the the matter and sort of filter it out and get what they need out of it. And, and then put it in little chambers. Yeah. They, they put the deuterium storage, and then now they've got antimatter. As long as they get the antimatter. And, and then they use a dilithium crystal to create the spark uh, to create the proper magnetic yeah. field within which well, combine well they got magnetic them. fields that are kind of controlling it and the, the lithium is just sort of catalyzing the react is, yeah. is sort of mediating the, the reaction sort of catalyzing is maybe not the right word but sort of m- making the reaction possible in a way that's not going to destroy the ship <laughs> no, I, I was gonna say why not, I was gonna ask before why not just like collect a bunch of dirt like because dirt is matter. Be- yeah, yeah, but but it will that will work I suppose, a, but but the problem is it, it like these are fine tuned warp cores that are yeah. trying to they're they're built for. It's you put in of, this, you put in this, you get out. It, you know. It's kind of like you know how there are some engines that run off of corn oil. Yeah. But you put corn oil into a regular engine and it fucks it up. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. You you can technically run a starship on dirt if you if you create the starship to run off of that kind of matter by finding the correct antimatter correlative to it. But unfortunately, you need the right anti-elements basically because you need and you know say dirt is made of silicon and carbon you need anti-silicon and anti-carbon well as the as an example you're not really you don't need it to be anti-silicon anti because it's 
antiprotons and protons, you know, like, well, anytime you have any sort of matter, it's not the but, same, it doesn't have to be the same thing. You don't need anti-silicon for silicon. What you need is the deuterium is picked because it's of, uh, light and it's easy to come by. That's why they use it. It's rel It's probably relatively easy to come by when you have a starship, but like you don't need like anti. It's more. It's more just like that's what it's tuned for. It's tuned for running on deuterium. So, like. Anti. In fact, they use antimatter and matter together in their bomb in some some bombs some of their sort of torpedoes used matter antimatter weapons i think hello uh, hello I was, okay. something. I was thinking that um that container that the antimatter was in must have been made of antimatter well you no, can mag like, you can use magnetic fields to contain it it, it was a um it was Basically, kind of like a Faraday cage, but for antimatter. Uh, no, that seems silly. Yeah, and that's why there were different layers to it, because antimatter storage is a very complicated thing. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 storing antimatter is very very tricky because it you have to keep it away well, from all little, other matter, otherwise it explodes. Yeah, one little leak and you can blow up the ship. Yeah, you're more likely, you know, unless if it's super concentrated Although, like they had there, it'll explode. More likely on sort of our scale now, like one of your atoms will leak out and, you know, well, will it contact something else and then annihilate. And then you've lost your antimatter, which is really hard to collect in the first place. Yeah. I mean... Bird beak uh, died collecting it. So. Now, the question is, did he die because something got to him, or did he get stuck in there and just starve to death? Uh, it's hard to tell. Based off of some bones. True. He could have been. He could have been hit by some of the, you know, plasma that he was trying to collect. Fried chicken. <laughs> uh, <sighs> anything else for this? Um, I can't think of anything, and if I do, I'll just add it to the part two because that's like the one big episode. Yeah. Yeah. So if you miss any, if we think we missed anything. Go to part two. <laughs> yeah, watch next week. <laughs> yes. Okay. And 